So in this video, we are going to see how you can store the session variables and its values in different way. So in this, we are going to see we are going how to big already a session itself when it stores it stores as an array. Okay. So now we are going to see how you can store. Uh, so this first we are starting the session start by using this function. And then session variables inside the session will you how to give the name of the variable and the value assigned to that. So now that this itself is an array. Now we use var dump. Uh, so when you run this program, you will be having the output like this. You can see that it's like a, a session this is like an array. And then see here the key, key is the left hand side. That is here. This is the key. And then to the right hand side is the value. So it also prints like that. And then here, what is the type that also it prints? And what is the length of the data that also it prints? So now uh, to see that, see, this is logged in. I have stored true. So it gives Boolean video. So what type of data you are storing, that type it automatically takes and it prints. That is a, a, a power of PHP, which we have seen so far. Now we'll store, see another method where you can store. Here, if you store like this, everything will be stored. Even if you store other variables also will be mixed with this. But I don't want to be like that. I want to store some in a sub, I want to give a separate name for this as user. And within that, I want to store. Then you can store like this. This is another method of, method of storing the uh, session variables. So you have to declare a variable, which is of type array. Then use that variable and then you use, uh, you can store the uh, as key and value pair. And finally, you make it as a session variable by this statement, dollar underscore session, then you give the array name equal to, the, you give a name and then you assign it to, uh, in the right hand side, you assign the array. Now this becomes a session variable and you can access the values using the name user. So now this itself become an array. So now you can access all this. So you can, instead of uh, storing directly, just like in a folder, you directly store the data. Instead, uh, you create separate, separate folder and the files uh, related to that folder, if you store, it will be a well-organized manner. So similar to that here, uh, user-related data, we declare it as an array. And then finally, we make it as a session. And then we will be able to access using this array name. So we'll see here, it's like uh, when you print that VATAM, when you give uh, this VATAM, you will get the output like this. Okay, now another method in which you can store. Here, uh, instead of declaring separate array, here you can give the name as user and then user name. Like this also you can store. And finally, you make it as a, while declaring itself, you make it as a session variable. Uh, here, what we have done is we have declared an array separately, and then finally we make that as a session variable. That is here, while uh, declaring each and every variable and assigning value, and that itself it becomes a session variable. So, like that also, you can both are same, similar. Both method you can adopt. Now, uh, this is a small program where uh, we pass the session ID to another web page from one web page to another web page. So for example, here, uh, this is used for, uh, when a user is working in a remote place, I would like to, from the server side, I would, be, would like to catch what is the, his ID. So that can be catch like this. So session verify remote agent equal to server HTTP user agent. So this HTTP user agent is put in this variable. Then we, uh, print the session started, your session ID is printed. Now we'll see, this is for uh, from the client side, okay? Client, we will record remote client name as a session variable. Now how to get it from this server side? See here, uh, again, you store this, then you, you check whether the verify remote agent, this is what you put it in the client side, that is left hand side. So now you get, you can get that value or you can check for this value. So that is what we are doing here. See here, dollars, if whether the value is set for this uh, session variable or 
uh, whether it is not equal to this HTTP user, if it is not equal to. So in both cases, if it is not set or if that verify remote agent is not equal to it, then in both case, session is session check is failed. Else, if any one of this is true, then session is verified and the session ID will be printed. I just I'll show you. We will execute this program. Session remote. This is the first program from the client side. The session is started and session ID is coming here. Now we will open another one where session I'm running the next one from the let us imagine it from the server side. See here now from this uh, from this uh, web page, this session ID is can be accessed in this website, in this uh, web page. So that's what we have achieved. That is from one web page to another web page, we can pass on and we can find out what session ID, in which session ID the client is working, the remote client is working. 